I was not convinced entirely, oh, but I, I was that suspicious <laughs> that she might be the love of my life. <laughs> Hey, and welcome back to Destination Unknown. I'm Josh, and here with me is the lovely... Blake Connor. That is me. Um, I have no recollection of what episode this is, or where we are, or what I'm doing with my life. Could you <laughs> tell me, to Josh? That's totally okay. Um, I don't know what episode <laughs> it is either, but I can find out very quickly if you're actually interested. I think it's episode 16, but yeah. I digress. That's, I'm that's gonna, unimportant. I'm going to assume that that's right. <laughs> so I had this whole intro planned out, but I immediately decided that it wasn't going to happen because I knew that you would continue to talk after you introduced yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I just let you have your have your moment. And here we are. See, these are the things that we could talk about before we start. I didn't know you had an intro <laughs> plan. Go ahead and proceed as though I hadn't spoken. Um. Today we're going to, I don't even know what I was going to say now. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, it's But okay. uh, yeah, so Blake and I just got back from a pretty fun vacation. Um, and Blake. To the internet. Whoa. Oh, Take no. Whoa. In Did you hear that? Uh, Dude, how could Alexa, I not? My... <laughs> Dude, I hate, hate. Okay, I got to turn it off before it, it starts. <laughs> oh, my God. Take a look in your Alexa app. Oh my gosh, this is man, Josh. I really hate that. I really hate that Alexa's been listening this entire time. Oh, it, I love, I love that that's been happening. <laughs> she's been, she's been listening to me sleep, man. She could be plotting in the middle of the night. Well, I don't it's think the government's gonna get any crazy information off of you while you're sawing logs. Well, to be fair, I do sleep <laughs> plot. You know, I reveal all the most intimate uh, details of oh. my nefarious schemes whilst yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asleep. I've had your multiple planned... people tell me that throughout my life. Yes. Yeah, your your planned assassinations and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That sort you of thing. You just spill all the beans while you're uh, while you're snoozing. Yeah, that's the only. I, I'm surprised that you don't know that by now. I mean, you've slept in the <laughs> same room as me enough times that I'm sure that you've heard some really high level treason going on. Well, <laughs> so. No, I haven't heard a lot of sleep talking, <laughs> but one one instance that I remember specifically that I <laughs> like hold very near and dear to me because it's so funny. But um, one night, Alex and I were staying at your house and we decided to film a video and you out of nowhere just got so sick. And so oh. you were you were out like you were you were not in. You were just in bed, like <laughs> like resting. I don't know why we didn't just leave your house, honestly, <laughs> looking back now. But uh, Alex and I filmed this whole video. And then every time we go into your room, Blake, I felt like I felt like you were possessed by a demon. <laughs> like, like we would we would ask you a question like, hey, Blake, uh, we're going to McDonald's. Do you want anything? And you would just <laughs> leave me alone. Oh, <laughs> oh, I vividly I vividly remember that, too. I remember that because that is one of the most miserable experiences I've ever had like you have those those sleepless nights or things like that. <laughs> I remember you guys left for I don't even think it was McDonald's. I think you went to Steak and Shake and you said, "Do you want to yeah, come?" And I was I like, think, "I think we did." I was like, "I, I can't." And uh, you're like, "Do you want us to bring you back something?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, bring me something." And so like you left, and I remember <laughs> staring at the ceiling of my room from the moment you left until the time you returned, like an hour and twenty minutes later. Like I didn't sleep a wink. I just sat there like breathing, like. <gasps> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was misery. It was truly, truly misery. It's like, if you could put purgatory in a feeling, that has to be it. I don't ever want to feel like that again. It was so terrible. <laughs> um, let's get back to what we were talking about before. We just went on a trip out to the yes. East Coast. Yes, we did. <clears throat> and a trip it was. It was. It was quite an arduous journey getting there. So uh, from from the place we departed from, which is my my abode in Knoxville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. it should have taken us nine and a half hours, according to my GPS. Yeah. And boy, let me tell you, it did not take nearly <laughs> that amount of time. It took far, far more time. <laughs> and yeah. we we got caught in standstill traffic. 
um, three different times on three mm-hmm. separate occasions. Mm-hmm. The first time, which I'll tell about the first time, uh, and then you can take the reins for the third because yeah, I know you you'll enjoy that. Yeah. But the first time we get stuck in standstill still traffic, it is the middle of the day and it is scorching hot outside. Mm. And my truck's fan isn't the best. And if my parents listen to this podcast, they will be furious with me because they did not. They were not thrilled about me driving out there, but it got so hard, so hot that my engine would like overheat and Mm -hmm. my truck would just shut off. And we're just like sitting in traffic. And the first time it happened, it was terrifying because we didn't know like what the issue was at that point. Yeah, just and we we just thought we were like, my truck is dead, like. Like that was it. Yeah, there are cars behind R. us R. honking. <laughs> yeah, there are like people behind you, like honking, and, and you're like, and you looked at me. It sputtered. It sputtered to a stop. Like <laughs> the moment traffic started moving, <laughs> so you know people are agitated and they're just rearing to go. And yeah. hey, and did you just move ten feet? I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and poor, poor little Stefan, my uh, my truck, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> was just a little overheated and he didn't want to go anymore. He's a little but, toasted. Uh, we we eventually got through that. Um come to find out that the reason that the traffic had been held up was that a semi had flipped oh, like it was further bad. up the road. It was so bad. I don't know if the person driving that semi is okay. I hope that they are, but it was a horrible accident. Um I mean, it was just we mangled get, like, the box itself. Yeah. Like I've never seen a semi box. Like you think about how big those uh, trailers are on those trucks, and think about that. Just oh yeah, crumpled up into like a horseshoe out in the woods is what this yeah. looked like. It was it was brutal looking, and um, we got through that, and we we finally get we finally get rolling again, and uh, not too not too long after, uh, we find ourselves in standstill traffic again, uh, and at this point we're just so over it. Uh, it has started like pouring rain and <laughs> we had to we had to get all of the things out of the back of the truck inside the truck, which I'm surprised that we pulled off. But uh, we, t- we, we managed we t- to do like, that. The really important stuff. We left some like I remember I had a huge luggage case sat across my like seat. It was almost hitting the gear shift for Josh and the steering wheel. So I had to be really careful not to set us in reverse going down the highway because I (laughs) accidentally sneezed. You know what I mean? Yeah. He would adjusting his bag. He would occasionally slam the bag into the gear shift, (laughs) 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 but we, we made it through both of these trials. And at this point, you know that we're famished. So we decide to stop at a cracker barrel. Oh, the beginning of the beginning story. of the beginning of a love story. Yes. <laughs> um, Blake and I walk into this Cracker Barrel and we've had it at this point. Like mm. we are just we're just over it. We want to sit down for a while and relax. And, you know, Cracker Barrel's there for us. Of course. So we walk in and we are walking up to the host stand. And mm-hmm. Blake said, wouldn't it be funny if we acted like we didn't know where we were? So I'm always down for a good old a good old practical joke, you know what I'm saying? For a nice so, little laugh. Yeah, a nice little laugh. It's harmless. So I walk up <laughs> to the stand and I look the hostess into the eye into her eyes and say, "What state are we in, ma'am?" <laughs> <laughs> We've been traveling for a long time and we're delirious <laughs> in need and, of Cracker Barrel desperately. And she kind of laughs and looks at us and she says, well, luckily for you guys, you're at Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. So she she sets she sits us down uh, at a table close to the uh, close to the front and uh, leaves us to order. And I can't help but notice that she is a beautiful woman. I believe I believe that I believe that the terminology used was her radiant beauty. Something (laughs) something like that. Captivated me. Yes. Yes. I was not convinced entirely, but I I was suspicious (laughs) that she might be the love of my life. (laughs) So throughout the night, this this gal and I 
keep catching each other's eye. And we mm. are exchanging glances and smiles throughout the night. This is a part one of a two-parter that we will continue later in the podcast. Mm-hmm. But uh, nothing nothing crazy happens at Cracker Barrel. Well, uh, except you get those big plates of dumps. And by the dumps, I'm talking about the dumplings. Um, oh, yes. The, the chicken oh, gravy yes. dump. Oh, my Lord. It's like, it's <laughs> salvation. When you've been, when you're just so thirsty from sitting out there in the heat baking in Josh's stationary truck, and then you sit down there to a big, nice, warm plate of dump. It's so nice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So after a successful meal uh, and we conquered our food, mm, we absolutely food ravaged through our meals. <laughs> <laughs> so we leave Cracker Barrel victorious and set off onto what we thought would be the home stretch of our journey. You know, we've only got a few hours left. Things mm. are going to be smooth sailing from here. So that's when I get on the GPS and I notice that up ahead, it says that the road is closed. You know how on Google Maps, you can see it'll say yellow for, you know, slowing down red for traffic. And then after that, I've never seen it say that a road is closed, but we're going down the interstate and the road is closed. And I look at Josh, I'm like, it must like, that must be a fluke. Like it's, it must be fine. So we pull up to uh, some standstill traffic, you know, and we're like, like we're over this, but Hopefully it doesn't last too long. There are like four lanes out here. No worries. We should be good to go, right? Well, about an hour passes. Nothing's happened. People are getting out of their cars. We haven't moved. Um, People are going around talking on cell phones. There are people reversing their way down the shoulder trying to get out of it. Um, It's kind of a lawless wasteland. It's like martial law had been declared in the middle of our journey. Um, This is about the time that we decide to look up what's happened. And Josh looks at me after Googling it and he says, oh, I see what's happening. This is breaking news in Maryland. There was a police shooting like 50 yards up the road from us. <laughs> a man armed with a knife had been shot by a police officer, and therefore they shut down the interstate for the investigation. So another 45 minutes pass. We've been here about an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. Finally, traffic starts to move. We pull up to like a police scene, and they just turn us around the other way on the interstate. So we sat there two hours to just turn right back around. Um, and for most people, like, like I understand that these are very extenuating circumstances, but we were just like, picture two delirious men having just traveled through the desert for days. This is what we looked like. We were getting mean we were getting vulgar <laughs> and we were tired. The crack, the cracker barrel was wearing off. <laughs> it had held us over for a while, but we were, we were at the end of our, uh, the end mm. of our, our patience. We were yeah. ready to be done with our drive. Oh, yeah. When you sit in a car for like 14, 15 hours in one day. Oh, my God. I don't want to do that again anytime soon. (laughs) I also just okay. I don't want to be insensitive, but I also just don't understand the logic in shutting down the interstate for several hours. So because one man, I, I get it. A man got shot and that's a big deal, but he didn't die. They rushed him off to the hospital and in my mind, that should be the end of it. Like, open up the road and let's get going. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, what, like, like what this happens? is a major, this is a major interstate. Like, this off of this interstate is like Washington D.C., Baltimore, like the bridge to Delaware. Like, like this is a major interstate, and they've yeah. just sh- shut down three or four lanes. Like, all eastbound lanes are just completely shut down, and it's like. <laughs> I, I don't understand that like yeah I didn't I, understand why like the business couldn't be conducted somewhere else like whatever investigation they were like having like I understand that it's important that you need to like they, they you know they talk about like conducting police business I guess I just don't know what police business is because I'm not a police officer so I don't yeah. know what they were doing frustrating yeah. me I guess because I'm an entitled brat <laughs> but we made it we made it to Delaware didn't we Josh finally we did yes <laughs> and from that moment on we had a wonderful time uh we stayed with my host family from last summer if you are a seasoned podcast listener you know that I was an intern in Delaware last summer mm-hmm. uh we stayed in the same home uh which was just absolutely awesome like they're incredible people uh, shout shout out to Jim and Michelle 
Um, also staying at that house are some of our dear friends, uh, Cal Kinman and Elijah Mueller. Uh, so we got to spend time with them and another one of our friends, Lauren Mallory. And that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Saturday, the reason for the trip, uh, Saturday, we went to a wedding, Mm -hmm. um, saw two of my dear friends get married and it was just a really, really fun trip. Uh, Sunday. We you can you can take the reins, Blake, because I feel like I'm talking. No, about. no, no, it's OK. But, um, I'm just I'm just I'm trying to give a natural. brief recap of the trip. No, I get that. Uh, what did we do Sunday? Oh, I remember what we did Sunday. Well, Sunday. Oh, yeah. We, we went to um, a couple of the services over there at the Crossing Church. If you're ever in yes. Rehoboth, Delaware, uh, be sure to stop by and say hello. Uh, they're all wonderful folks out there, but um, the the main course, and I call it the main course because I'm about to get into one of the seven deadly sins. You know, after services, <laughs> we just really got into gluttony. We went out to oh my uh, Maryland. We went out to Maryland. And Baltimore. We met up. Yeah. yeah, Baltimore specifically. Yeah, Baltimore specifically, and we met up with um, Matthew Brooks and Glory Kim. Uh, you may know them as Slice and Rice. I've uh, this is so this is the third time that I've seen them. Um, I met them. Uh, twice at VidCon in California over the past few years. This is the first time that Josh had met them. Um, mm-hmm. We met up. Um, we had a really, really wonderful time. Uh, yeah, I had a there. ton of fun. Uh, these are people that we've known for a long time, but we've just never really had an opportunity to spend like a Actual, lot of time with them. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, And it was really fun. Yeah, like I'd, but, I'd met them before, but only in the context of like a YouTube convention. So like, it was nice to like actually just sit down and hang out, you know, for a dinner. Um, while we were there, we ate so much food. I remember it was it was stupid how much food that we <laughs> ate. We we stopped at this place called Nick's Fish House. Um, little did we know how popping it was. Like that was this that was the place to be because it was. We, we rolled up, and even when we showed up early to like like stop in and get the reservation with Matt and Glory, they told us like, all right, yeah. So the wait for outside is probably like an hour and a half and we're like oh what about what about inside and they're like oh that's probably a little shorter so we waited outside for probably 45 minutes all the while like a storm's on its way in like we've mm-hmm. been warned that there's hail coming and we're like we just don't want to be caught outside when that happens like, w- that would be a great way to ruin the dinner but luckily we get inside and while we were outside talking i i was telling matt and glory i said i really need to get i said i'm going to feel disappointed if i don't order the most food among you and they said, what, what, is, what does that mean? And I said, well, because then I'm just going to look at your plate and say, man, I wish I got that. Because I eat so much food, it is insane. I am just, it's, uh, I mean, my girlfriend Rachel calls me uh, her human trash can because I just eat everything in sight. It just keeps coming, keeps coming. I don't know where I put it all, but I eat everything. And they said, so, and then they decided that they wanted to make it a little bit of a challenge. Um, Matt and I got the same meal. Um, and I, it's one of those things that like you shouldn't take pride in, but I did. I took a little bit of a sick amount of pride <laughs> in the obesity that I was participating in. Just all of the food I was cramming down. Um, you want to chime in, Josh? I'm just talking about eating and it's making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we ate an absurd amount of food uh, during the meal. And then they offered to buy us desserts. So we're like, well, we'll obviously partake in desserts. Yeah. So we are served giant desserts as well. Oh, my favorite um, part about that story and, is how the waiter tells he looked at you guys and he was like, are you sure that you each want to get like what was it you got? You got like a fudge brownie sundae or something. Yeah, like that? chocolate fudge brownie sundae. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, "Yeah, that's probably like big enough to feed two people. Are you sure that you want to like split it up? And we're like, give us four desserts, baby. We're not in this to be bitches. No, absolutely not. We are in it for the long haul. And man, oh man, do I tell you that was a mistake. (laughs) Because we ate all of our desserts. But on the ride back to Delaware (laughs) from this restaurant, (laughs) we felt horrible. Hmm. Yeah, we we had to seek the first uh, the first get without going into any detail. We had to seek the first gas station bathroom we could to just absolutely wreck. Uh, (laughs) We the first one that we stopped in, they just had porta potties outside. We said, you know, like 
Horn everybody piss. has yeah everybody has a standard you know what i mean it's like you're like oh i really gotta go to the bathroom and they're like ah oh, there's a porta potty outside you're like oh i guess i don't have to go that bad yeah like, I, I can hold it to the next gas station we're both we're both like miserable pulling into this uh <laughs> Pulling into this gas station, I like waddle out of the car into the convenience <laughs> store. And I'm like, "Can I use your bathroom?" And they they tell me there's a porta potty, and then we both just decide we want to leave. <laughs> yeah, we're like, "No, nah, no, nah, it's fine, it's fine." I would rather do anything than use a porta potty. Porta potties are honestly, it's like I I cannot I cannot fault their convenience, but they are a lot. They are also a lawless wasteland. Um, if you had to like account for the grimiest places on earth. I think porta potties are high on that list. Like no matter how clean it is, it's still a porta potty. I would rather just walk 20 feet into the woods and take care of my <laughs> business there. Yeah. I understand. It would be that. cleaner. Probably. <clears throat> All right, let's stop talking about Dookie. Let's get... <laughs> We are we're talking about a lot of Dookie on this podcast, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we are. It's been gross. <laughs> it's the Dookie cast. I don't like that. Let's let's refrain. Um, <laughs> what did we do? Oh, Monday. Monday, we did something really fun. We made it out to Washington, D.C., which this is your second time going, right, Josh? Yes. Yeah, you went last, last summer. Um, this is my first time stepping out into the Capitol. Um, to everybody out there who has seen the Capitol, I'm sure you understand it's a very expansive and monumental that's the word that I keep using to describe it because it's a city of monuments. I mean, like I've never seen yeah. so many statues, so many like memorials, things like that. Um, and it's just so like, I couldn't help but feel, this is going back to what we talked about in our last podcast with Alec. Um, I couldn't help but feel a little bit of American pride just walking through the, through the streets, seeing like the Washington Memorial and like the Lincoln Memorial and all of that. And it's just like, I, like, I know I personally had no stake in any of this. I didn't, contribute anything to it but it's like this is our nation and seeing the capital of it after being alive for over two decades for the first time was just so cool it was just so cool yeah it 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 definitely is a really cool place and i recommend it to anybody uh i love i just love going to like the smithsonians honestly <laughs> Oh, the like the monuments, free. the monuments are the monuments are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, once you've seen them once, you're like, I mean, I would like to see them every time I go. But if yeah. I miss one or two, like, it's not a huge deal. But I don't know. Washington, D.C. is a really cool experience for well, sure. Dude, it's like it's like Mount Rushmore. Like, I can't imagine anyone ever making like a destination out of Mount Rushmore. Like, if you live in that state and you're like near it, sure. Yeah. Go see it. I'm sure it's very, very cool. But like, that's it. Like, what else are you going there for? Washington, D.C. has all kinds of crazy cool stuff. It's like you go see the president's faces on a mountain. And then after that, you're like, ah, cool. You know, yeah. Washington, D.C., there's so many things that you can see that uh, like it actually happened to us. We were just walking down like a sidewalk and then somebody turns and they're like, hey, is that the White House over there? And it, <laughs> and it was yeah we and inadvertently that would, parked that like just that just wouldn't from. happen uh, other places you know what I mean like yeah, just seeing so many passing cool things passing just like these mega famous locations like just on a on a whim uh but yeah Washington D C is awesome many stealing um, the Declaration of Independence and Nicolas Cage jokes were made I'm sure that all of them oh, were yes. wholly unoriginal and I feel no remorse for any of them. Uh, yep, I think all of the same jokes that Mark and I made a year prior uh, were made uh, again uh, well, on this Washington, D.C. trip sure, by other people. And I'm sure they will be every day yes. from this day until um, National, Treasure, uh, National Treasure is no longer relevant, which we've got decades for that, baby. It's the, it's the gift <laughs> that just keeps giving back. I don't know if I would call National Treasure relevant. But but everybody knows that Nick Cage stole but, the Declaration of Independence. But we're still familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. When when Nick when Nicholas Cage and uh, National Treasure have left the the public eye and the um, <laughs> like like what movie do you think of like you know what movie first makes you think of Washington D.C. It's like first movie I think definitely of National, National Treasure. Treasure. Yeah, yeah. Just because of I mean. He's stealing the Declaration of Independence. Like, 
uh, there, there, there are plenty of other movies that take place in Washington, D.C., but it's like everybody drives in and like, oh, wow. Like, I even made a joke about it on Facebook today, and I still feel no remorse. It's my time. <laughs> Blake, uh, this, is, this wasn't planned for the podcast, but... I think mm. it's a I think it's a route I want to go at least for a little while. Is anything ever but, planned for the podcast? Well, no, but <laughs> it is a, it is a deviation. That's why yeah. it's destination unknown. We have no idea what we're going to talk. The only about. thing certain is uncertainty. Go ahead, proceed. Um, but Blake, what are your opinions on Nicolas Cage? Because man, is that a loaded question? Nicolas Cage is well. D- do you know any of the backstory of what happened with Nicolas Cage? Like, what, I didn't. Like, I don't think I was aware that something happened. Yes, so something ha- Nicolas Cage went bankrupt because I'm pretty sure I read. So this has been a long time ago. Here we go again, spreading the misinformation. Um, <laughs> there was a Cracked.com article about how he purchased a dinosaur skull that okay. he basically couldn't afford. And Who texted you? The, Bailey Connerly. What did he say? Do you, no, I'm not going to do this again. I, <laughs> um, <laughs> man, he, you got to keep your phone somewhere else. He man. bought a, well. No, I'm talking to you on the phone. How can I keep my phone somewhere else? Well, you gotta you've got to orient it in a way where I can't hear your text messages because if well, I hear a, possible because if I hear a buzz, because I'm going to want to know who it is and the, I want to know what is being said. <laughs> I just, I silenced my phone. I forgot to silence my phone. I'm sorry. Um, but what did he say? Nicholas Cage bought a dinosaur <laughs> skull for like something uh, in the millions of dollars um, that bankrupted him. And he started having to take basically every movie role he could get. Now, this was, <laughs> this was a while back. So like, I sincerely doubt that this is still the problem, but I think he just really went downhill on, what movie choices he was making. He's one of those actors that it's like, it's not, I don't think it would be a big deal to like hire him anymore. He's just absolutely ridiculous. Do you think we could get him? (laughs) No, I don't think, I don't think we'd want him. I think I would want him. You would want Nicolas Cage. Absolutely. You know, and if if Nick Cage ever watches this, I don't want it to be, I don't want him to think that I'm just, I'm hating on him because I like the movies that he's in. Uh, it's just I don't I don't know what purpose we'd have for Nick Cage in a Rapture Films video. You like the movies he's in? Some of them. <laughs> okay. I like I like the original Ghost Rider. Of course, then again, it's also been like ten years since I've seen it. Yeah, I don't think that's a movie that holds up. You don't think so? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's a there's a line that one of his uh, his biker pals says to him. Or I think he's saying it to uh, Eva Mendez. Uh, and he's like, uh, man, we were riding the gravy train with biscuit wheels till you derailed it. Like he's like trying to roast her or something like that. I don't know. Um, One of my favorite things to do in my spare time is to just look up um, funny Nic- Nicolas Cage scene compilations <laughs> on YouTube. The because, bees. man, <laughs> just like Nicolas Cage, like rants and like freak outs and mm-hmm. stuff like, oh, boy, is that some entertaining stuff. Isn't there stuff. one where he like dumps paint all over himself? Yes, there is. <laughs> and it's so funny. Oh, um, yeah, that's that's my that's the long answer to the question of what I think of Nicolas Cage. Uh, I think that he kind of went off the deep end as far as taking every role that he was offered. And that was not that was not the best. They actually had a college humor sketch about that called Nicolas Cage's agent where like like his agent keeps getting contacted about movies and he calls Nick on the phone. He's like, listen, don't take this. Fil-. And then like you hear on the other end of the phone, Nick Cage is like, I'll do it. Doesn't matter. I'll do it. And then you keep seeing, <laughs> you keep seeing the posters of these awful movies that progressively get worse and worse. Um, it's super funny. I really recommend it. <laughs> that is funny. <clears throat> um, to be fair. I also take every role that I'm offered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're also not being paid money for it, so maybe that's worse. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> um. Well, okay. What What else did we do in uh, Monday? Tuesday we filmed five videos. Oh yeah, we did. We did. We we really hammered out a bunch of videos. Um, if I think yeah. about the timeline of this, 
this podcast, when this podcast is released, a drawing video will have been released earlier yes. this week. But yes. it's weird speaking about something as though it's happened when it hasn't for me. Yeah, it, our like, uh, our first drawing challenge was released three days ago. It has currently 205 views. and oh. <laughs> Getting really bold now. <laughs> it has 14 <laughs> likes and one dislike. Mm. <laughs> now, if that comes true, I'm going to lose my mind if that it, were to come true. I hope it I hope it does. I really do. <laughs> um, Wednesday, we made our we made our passage back. Josh, the, the people need a conclusion to the Cracker Barrel yes. love story. Yes, um, I circle. set up the cliffhanger. Uh, we'll go full circle on recounting our uh, our traveling all tra- our traveling ventures. I will say, while we were gone, um, one thing I have two things to add to the story before I I let you finish it out. I will say, um, I didn't really think too much of it, and we didn't even really make a big deal of it until we were sitting in that traffic where the police shooting was for like two hours. And uh, Josh goes, "I wonder what she's up to right now." And I look at him and I go, <laughs> who? And he says, the Cracker Barrel waitress, you know, the love of my life or hostess. I'm sorry. And yeah. we, <laughs> we will we will name drop. But or should we not? <laughs> I think we don't. I think we don't. <laughs> I mean, there's no. What if we use the wrong name? The wrong name? OK, I just wanted to make it very clear to the audience that we do know her name. We know her name because she's a ghost, because after we left and Josh started talking about her, I said, well, we have to find out if this girl has a boyfriend. So we started looking online. <laughs> we started looking on like Instagram and Facebook and like searching. And we only knew her first name. So. Yes. so we're really using some super sleuth skills. And about the time we decided this was too far, maybe we got a little too creepy. We took it about two steps further and then we stopped. Yes, we definitely didn't stop at the moment that it became weird, <laughs> but but I digress. So on our way on our on our venture home, uh, we we had to bookend the trip uh, the only way that made sense, and that was to visit the same Cracker Barrel again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was so, really important. So we pull in, we pull into Cracker Barrel. And I'm like, maybe, just maybe, Lucy, not her name, uh, maybe Lucy will be working. If the and stars we'll, align and everything is well in the universe. If the stars align, Lucy will be behind that hostess stand. And we walk in, and lo and behold, there she is, in all of all her of- radiant beauty. <laughs> so, we exchange glances, and we start heading over to the stand (laughs) and by the time we get there she had been replaced by another hostess (laughs) yeah i don't know where she went i don't know what happened Mm -hmm. because it was a mere like 10 seconds Mm -hmm. but we uh we get seated by this other hostess um (laughs) not interested in her uh because she's you know like 50 (laughs) (laughs) But but we get seated and again, like we we keep seeing her walk by her and I keep catching each other's eyes and, you know, things are things are feeling pretty good. (laughs) Good. Keep in mind, I hadn't spoken to this this gal in like a week, but, you know, yeah, we left we left on we left on very good terms. (laughs) The only thing that you said to her was. Where are what, we? <laughs> what state are we in? <laughs> Keep in mind, but, we're on great terms. So, <laughs> Blake and I have our food, and we have we we have more hot dumps, and then <laughs> we we finish our food, and then we go to the bathroom to uh, <laughs> we, we go, go to, to the, the bathroom, bathroom for, to Josh? to release the dumps oh, that we had had because <laughs> your boy your boy doesn't handle gluten as well as all other people yeah well but... i was talking about uh, that's a little side story i was talking to josh about gluten intolerance so it's like i can't believe that some people are like gluten intolerant you know like it's so strange to me and he goes well you know one surprise 
It's me. And I was like, but Josh, you consume so much gluten. I was like, I've seen you oh, eat yeah. so many biscuits. And you're like, yeah, and it hurts me too. <laughs> and ever, and on this trip, Blake has <laughs> come oh, to realize oh, I can very testify. certainly that my gluten intolerance is a real thing. <laughs> if Josh eats a biscuit, it'll kill him, but he'll love it. <laughs> I'll love every second of it. But uh, we find ourselves <laughs> once in we have once we have relieved ourselves. <laughs> This is this story is so gay, <laughs> but once we have done our business in the bathroom, Blake's like giving me a pep talk. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, because it's just... because you looked at me and you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, I never do stuff like this. I said, listen, Josh, I said, think about the podcast. Think about when we tell this story. If we come full circle and you do not follow through with this, what's going to be happen? horrible? Yeah, if it'd be you horrible. went all this way and you didn't speak to the waitress, if she's here, like think about how many things had to line up. We had to find oh, yeah. the same Cracker Barrel. She had to be here. Like you had to have that connection going. You had that rapport of locking eyes or whatever the hell it was you guys were doing. So I, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you purport is happening. So I said, I looked you in the eyes. Exchange eye. loving glances. I well. Anyway, I looked at you and I said, "You got to go do it." So you said. All right, you go wait outside. I'll be there in a minute. And I'm sitting on the bench, what feels like an eternity, because I don't know what's happening. It's like, I thought maybe you died in there. No, unfortunately, I did not die. <laughs> but so I I have mustered up the courage at this point. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. So I uh, I waltz out of the bathroom. <laughs> you waltz. And and and. I I see her. Uh, she's over there. She's at her stand, you know, doing a wonderful job uh, hosting. Uh, and her manager walks up and starts talking to her. And I'm like, of all the times to go up and, you know, <laughs> talk to this person, this is probably not one of them. <laughs> so this isn't the most opportune moment. I so hate when when her doing her job gets in the way <laughs> of my hunt. Speaking of. Her job very much got in the way because three different groups of people had uh, had accumulated into the line. And now I'm just like, well, I, I guess I'll just join the line. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm waiting in this line of people having already ate at Cracker Barrel. And she's well aware that I've already eaten as well. So I feel like way before the the incident happens, so she knows it's coming. <laughs> but but one by one, she seats them. And then all of a sudden, I'm standing right there. She returns to her stand. There's nobody else there. And it's one of those moments where I immediately realize it's like, okay, I have to talk to her this very second, because if not, it's going to be so weird when I finally do talk to her, because there was no hiding my intentions at that point. Like, I (laughs) I had made it very clear that I was there to talk to her. Yeah. And so I did it. I turned to her and I walked over and I said. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> I never do this sort of thing, but could I get your number? You know, very straightforward, very just putting all my cards on the table. Uh, the ball is in her court now. And what she does with the ball in her court is alley oop it back to me saying, oh, I have a boyfriend right now. <laughs> Leaving me feeling very strange because what do I do now? (laughs) I had later on, I had decided that I wish I would have just asked if I could have it anyway, because that would have been a baller move. Instead, I responded very awkwardly. I was like, oh, okay, cool. (laughs) And then she said, aren't you the guy that was here the other day and didn't know where you were? <laughs> and I s- yep, that was me. That was, that was me. I was lost. And she said, I remembered you. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> and then we just stand there for a moment and I'm like, well, have a good day. 
<laughs> and oh. then I scurry out of the store. Oh. You could cut that tension like hot Cracker Barrel cornbread. That was... Oh, boy, was that an experience. It was... I'm glad that you did it, though. I'm glad that you learned something. Me too. You would have felt worse if you had I wouldn't have been able to live with myself had I not just pulled the trigger. No. Well, I will say... The curious thing about the story is the detail... Like, she said she had a boyfriend right now. Which I thought that was pretty strange. That makes it seem like it's a temporary state. (laughs) She's like, I have a boyfriend right now, but I recognize that you could be the love of my life. (laughs) Yeah. So who knows? Maybe one day I'm Delaware again. Yeah. Oh, you better believe I'm stopping at that Cracker Barrel. (laughs) (laughs) And I will immediately ask what state I'm in. (laughs) Dude, that will trigger the memory for her every time. Like she'll it always will. remember you. Yeah, isn't it perfect? It will. Isn't that a like, isn't that a perfect uh, introduction? Yeah, I I like to introduce myself in memorable ways more often. Yeah, whether there are like romantic intentions or not. Like yeah. I just think that's a fun thing. I like being remembered. Yeah, carry around a bucket of hot oil and say your name, <laughs> and when you say your name, throw it on someone. They'll never just forget burn, you. Just burn them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll never forget who you are. I'm the guy that burned you <laughs> when we met. Yeah. The, um, now, Josh, the original intention, which this this started as a joke, and then we realized that it would be... And I'm glad that we didn't do it, too. Okay, here's the thing. So, I went to a different wedding. I feel like every Saturday, I, I, I'm i going to weddings, whether I'm recording them or whether I'm just attending them, whatever. Um had we done this stunt that we talked about at this second wedding that I went to, I think it would have been hilarious. If we had done it to the wedding in Delaware, <laughs> it would not have gone over well. Um, yeah. I pitched to Josh the idea of getting him a plus one by posting via, basically via Tinder, basically an advertisement where there are you know all the good photos of Josh, but I'm the one running the account. And at the end, <laughs> you know, it's like all inquiries go through me, and I'm like like dressed as a bouncer, like standing at the door, and like on the door it's written like Josh's heart, and it's like you have to get in here. And uh, I really wanted to just try and swipe and get somebody who'd be willing to come to the wedding, and given how low key the Delaware wedding was, that would have attracted a lot of attention because people would yes, have been asking have. that people would have, people would especially have been asking since, questions. Especially since a lot of people remembered me. Oh yeah. So and... many people came up to you and talked. They'd be like, who's yeah. this? And she'd be like, Oh, I just met him on Tinder. <laughs> who's this? I don't know. <laughs> but I they're my day. <laughs> <clears throat> no, um, it's, it's crazy. Like the start come, contrast weddings can have i really like um the wedding in delaware it was a lot of fun it was really low-key but like i've been to some that are like that really like kind of smaller um a little more conservative and then i've been to a few that were really outlandish um this oh yeah this way <laughs> this wedding this past saturday was so much fun i i did wedding videography for a girl um that i went to college with i've known her since freshman year we've been really good friends um and it was a lot of fun but while we were doing it Man, I remember throughout the night, like after the ceremony and things were over, um, well, that's when the open bar started. So people started going a little crazy. They started having guzzling. Drinks. Guzzling. Yeah. <laughs> guzzling. That's guzzling a good, booze. That's a good term for it. And the reason <laughs> that I know this is because, you know, that started probably around six. I'd say around 11 p.m. We were there for a long time. Um I'm out there dancing and my camera is off, put away. Like I finished my job. I'm just hanging out now. I'm having fun. The bride's mother approaches me and she says, where's your camera? And I think that she's initially upset at me that I'm not filming. And I was like, oh, it's, it's over there. I said, do you need me to record something? And she goes, no, I want to record you. And I was like, oh, um, okay. And I can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can get a, get a whiff of her breath and I can tell that she is just absolutely inebriated beyond comprehension. And I can also tell by the way that she's walking and it's very funny and it's very harmless. So I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So I give her the camera and I put the strap around her neck and I set it to record for her. And she goes, okay, what do I do now? And I said, all you got to do is point and shoot. And I said, I've got a recording for you. That's all you got to do. So she goes around in circles 
getting way, way, way too close to people with it, like within inches of someone's face. But I know for a fact you have to be like five feet away to focus them. I'm like, okay, like I, I know she has no idea what she's doing, but it's it's funny. And she comes back to me after a while and she says, how does it look? And I look at the camera and somehow she managed to immediately stop the recording as soon as I handed it to her. So I said, I'll be honest with you, you didn't record anything. And she kind of has a little meltdown. And she's like, I, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. She goes, I, that was all for nothing here. And she like takes it back and goes around the room this time for even longer. She's probably gone for 20 minutes recording different things, like different events around the wedding. And she comes back to me at the end of all of this. And what has she done? She has not recorded anything <laughs> for a second time. And she looks at me with this glimmer, this little twinkle in her eye. And she says, did I do good? And I look at that empty SD card. I look back at her and I said, you did great. You did great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and with a shy smile, she walked away and she felt really content. And I felt very happy. And I thought the whole situation was hilarious. And if at any point they see this podcast, which I doubt, but if you guys see this, I want you to know that it was really funny. And I'm glad that we yeah. had that night. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people are just so dead set on helping. Uh, even if it's not helping, like they just want to try that. Yeah. You can't really tell them. No. Yeah. Like I so understood what I feel, she's doing. Yeah. You know? And it was, it's sweet. It's also very funny considering the circumstances. Yeah. Considering she, she did it twice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Blake, we have recapped our vacation rather nicely, which is the main intention of what we wanted to talk about. I think so. Um, but uh, before we, uh, before we call it a wrap, uh on the on the cast um i'd like to do a little bit of rapture films channel housekeeping if mm. that's cool with you yeah go ahead. Uh, go ahead just to just to fill some people in so we have a lot of content coming your way um and a lot of different types of content coming your way uh blake and i decided that in order to keep doing this, because at this point it is nothing but a glorified hobby for Blake and I, like mm -hmm. the amount of money that the channel earns, like via ad revenue is just mm -hmm. completely just insignificant and irrelevant. Like mm -hmm. we are not, we're not making money off of our, our channel. So yeah. everything that we're doing is for fun. Um, and with that being in mind, to make the most content, we felt like it was necessary to expand the types of content that we were releasing. Mm -hmm. So instead of just skits and short films like every once in a blue moon, uh, we will continue skits and short films, probably at a, the same frequency that we have been doing them. Mm -hmm. But in addition to it, we have the podcast that's been going for a while now. And we're also just going to do other types of fun challenges and things like that. Um, just things that we think will be fun and that you will enjoy watching. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, keep an eye out. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when uh, we upload something. And please also comment and let us know what you think on things. Uh, I realize that the time to say those things is probably not like 45 minutes into a video. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for those of you that are still listening, um, yeah, just make sure that you've got that notification bell turned we on. We love you. Bailey and, Connerly. Uh, and comment. Yeah. Bailey Connerly comments. We, uh, we love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, we he, love you. Me so, he loved me so much. He texted me in the middle of this. That's going to be meta for him when he oh, watches yeah. this and that, he sees that. He I can't wait for that. Yeah. I can't wait for that. <laughs> when you go who text to me, and I go. Speaking of weddings, me. his wedding is coming up, and we I'm are, very excited for it. I'm very excited. I feel so honored. It's just it's, it's on my birthday. His wedding is on your birthday. Oh, I didn't yeah, even. It's October 12th. Yeah, he told is. me that it's his. He told me that it's uh his birthday gift for me this year, and to never expect a better one. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And. And I'm happy that that uh that they're getting married on my birthday. I will never forget their anniversary. No, no, you won't. That's <laughs> that's great. Um, wait. So does he get you a gift, or do you get him a gift, or does it cancel out? 
I think it just balances out. <laughs> I'll go and officiate his wedding as long as he uh, does it on my birthday. <laughs> do, you, do you do you? OK, this is all right. Yeah, we're over time. I'm going to make this my last question. Um, do you get people wedding gifts? In the past, historically, have you done so? Usually not. Yeah. And no. I know that sounds bad, but. Well, dude, we're, we're like, I feel like we're like in the grand scheme of adults. We're like the small children, you know, we're, we're the we're the little fish right now. Like, yeah, some people I feel like we're registries. I feel like we're at the age where we're supposed to get gifts, but I haven't really started that habit yet. Yeah, we're reaching so, the age where it's like maybe like by the time I'm 30, I'll be like, OK, if I'm going to go to a wedding, I should probably we've just a been gift. <laughs> we've just been uninvited to a lot of weddings. <laughs> to be fair, all of our all of our friends that are about to get married are listening to this podcast and like, Ugh, they're not going to get us any. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, most of the weddings that I attend I'm doing videography for so like the gift that I give them is their day cemented forever in 4k glory on YouTube man that sounded really that sounded really obnoxious and I didn't mean for it to I was just trying to describe it after they after they pay you copious amounts of money (laughs) (laughs) it's not a gift really it's it's not a gift it's a service (laughs) this has been Destination Unknown thank you so much for listening in uh, and we will see you not next week, but the week after, since this is a bi-weekly podcast. And if you didn't know that. Yes, that do. is what bi-weekly means. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.